Well, good morning. It is 8 a.m. in what my wife likes to call nerd world. I've got myself a cup of coffee. I'll close the door. Lock out the wife world. So my wife came to me yesterday and she was like, I need some cats. And I was like, what? You have cats. They're outside. But no, she needed some cats for her work. I don't know what she does exactly with the cats. It's a Subaru thing, apparently. I don't know. But anyway, we ran up to Hobby Lobby and I picked up this black pink silk PLA. $18.99, I believe, was the price. And we're running some off on the P1P. And you can see it is clearly black in the front. And let's see what the back looks like. Oh. And pink in the back. So. Black pink. Makes sense. So $18.99. I checked online and that seems to be the norm. For a black pink silk PLA. That price seems to be fairly reasonable. Um, so, yeah, and it seems to be printing very well. You know, we're printing out some cats. Now, over here on the Anycubic Cobra 3 Max, we're also doing some cats, but these are different cats. They're the same cat. They're just different material. So this is Hobby Lobby's Silk, PLA Silk Silver. And I could print a really lot of cats. We had a lot of cats. On this Cover 3 Max, but I'm only doing six. Um, again, I'm kind of breaking this machine in. Remember, we just got the replacement, so I'm just kind of breaking this machine in just to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And so far, so good. Still trying to get used to this DJI Ronin. Um, I think it's handy. I think it's helping. But, uh, yeah, I had to take the handle off. In my last video, uh, there was a big handle. It, looked, it almost looked like a microphone. Which was weird. Now they don't have the type of filaments that I use on a regular basis. So if we use like for instance, this is uh, Sunlu's PLA, just standard um, PLA Elite or Elite PLA. This is what I use for commercial printing. This is the shiny, did I say PLA? It's PETG. Uh, this is the shiny PETG. This isn't uh, the matte PETG. I've done some testing between the matte PETG and the shiny uh, Elite PETG. And this Elite is stronger. Uh, it seems to hold up better with 3D prints. So I just, I use it for my commercial purposes. And it my, makes my parts shiny. But thus far, I'm not having any complaints. It's more, my prints are more utilitarian, if you will, than... Uh, functional parts versus they should have a, a certain look to them, right? At the end of the day, the guys that buy the stuff I make, they could give a shit if it's shiny or if it's matte colored. They just want it to work, right? So that's what the case seems to be at the moment. Now, this is, like I said, this is the Sunlu PETG Elite. I put it on my bamboo spools because I have Stormtrooper problems. Like, that's kind of a cool combination, black and white for me. But we're going to be loading up some of that filament into our Flash Forge Adventurer 5Ms. And we're going to be doing some printing today, some commercial printing. Because I try to keep my inventory at a certain level. And after it gets so low, I'll just print some more. That way my shelves are stocked pretty much. Now don't get crazy. I'm getting, at this point, I was doing really good. Uh, but at this point, I'm only getting like 
one order a day, sometimes two orders a day. It's, it's definitely growing back uh, after I took the initial hit. I had a couple defects and I had a kind of a rash of returns because of some stupid design decisions and uh, implemented a change in my model before I actually fully tested it and I paid the ultimate price and lost most of my business on Amazon. So I'm just kind of creeping back really, really slow now that I've redesigned the product. I've not had any returns on that particular product uh, since that change and uh, things have been going well. So, but now it's that slow, like crawl back up from the bottom uh, to rebuild your uh, Amazon account and start to get, I still don't have the buy box. Someone else has it obviously, but it's okay. We're getting there slowly but surely. So let's get some filament loaded up in the Flash Forge Adventure 5Ms and we'll get our commercial prints going. So let me cut off this excess. I will load this filament up in my spool, feed it into the tube. Now while I'm feeding it into the tube, I'm going to go in here and hit load. And I got a PTFE tube that runs from this spool all the way to through the runout sensor and all the way up to the printhead. So usually by the time I kind of take my time and shove this filament through, the machine's usually pretty much ready. There we go. Now we're at the print head. So now we just have to wait for it to hit 240 and then we'll feed the filament into the machine. Now these machines, they don't have a filament cutter they are the most basic of printers in the world, but because of that, things don't break. Like, they just work. And you can buy these refurbed from Flash Forge. Now, these aren't refurbs. These were brand new. But you can buy these refurbed from Flash Forge for like 200 bucks. And uh, if you just need a workhorse printer, you don't care about all the bells and whistles you just literally want Let me see if it's going to draw it yeah um you know when you load it just purges and then you're going to have to grab that purge and pull it out of there when you want to unload you've got to remove the ptfe tube and cut the filament because it doesn't have a cutter all that seems really inconvenient but it's not it's it's super simple now my jobs are already in there so i just go in and pick that job and it's going to start. And I don't have to touch this machine again. Is it loud? Yes. These Flash Forge Adventure 5Ms are very loud. When you hear the fans going on these things, they're, they're considerably louder than, like, my bamboo machines. They're also shit tons cheaper. I don't really care how loud it is. If it consistently produces parts, and I can get them for cheap, I mean, no brainer. All right, so the Flash Forge is printing and my P1P is printing, but I'm wondering, let me turn off noise reduction. All right, there we go. So you can see them both moving. That really high pitch fan noise that you hear. That's the Adventurer 5M. The only thing you hear from the P1P is the head moving around. Right? But these Adventurer 5Ms, they have a cooling fan is for real. Like, they're, they're quite loud. Turn the noise reduction back on. Hopefully that worked all right. So yeah, they are they are loud. I think that's one valid complaint you could say is that the cooling part fan on the Adventure 5M is loud. 
And I imagine if I had a room of like 50 of these going all at once. Yeah, that might be pretty, pretty loud. I don't have a decibel meter to know. Um, but the Flash Forge with that cooling fan, that little side cooling fan, is substantially loud. I've seen some people online replace them with like a Noctua fan. And apparently that quiets them down quite a bit. But I don't really see the point. Even when I have all three of them going, you cannot hear them outside of this room. If I leave this room, you can't hear them. They're not making that much noise. So, to me, this should be a Flash Forge commercial, I suppose, because I'm just praising this Flash Forge. But at the end of the day, super simple printer. You hit print, your part comes out. There's no flashy bells and whistles like, yeah, it does leveling and it does everything that, you know, we expect a modern printer to do as far as, you know, doing a bed mesh, auto leveling, all that stuff. But, you know, does it have, you know, the AI scanning and all that stuff or even the stuff that the, uh, the, the you know, the X1 Carbon has? No, it doesn't. It doesn't have any of that stuff. I wonder feature wise, it's about the same as the P1P. Yeah, I think it is. But, uh, you know, hate to go on and on about these things. But honestly, if I, this is just my opinion, but if you're looking to set up uh, a small 3D print business in your house and you want some cheap printers, these things are, these things are good. I just, I can't complain about them at all. Okay, I think I'm done. I guess Flash Forge should be hitting me up for some sponsorship or something, right? <laughs> no, I'm not. I don't. I don't even have an affiliate code for for Flash Forge. Uh, I've, they've never sent me a product. Uh, can't remember. Oh, it was uh, zero? Was it? I can't remember his username. Zero CMD or something like that. Um, yeah, he was big on Flash Forge, and uh, he's the one that kind of encouraged me to buy one. And it was this one right here. This is the first one I bought. And then as my business grew, I started needing to make more parts. I just bought more. And, uh, you know, thank you, Zero, for the uh, recommendation. These things have been absolutely uh, flawless. I've not had an issue with them. I actually bought 0.6 nozzles for them and ran a 0.6 nozzle in them for a while. And then eventually went back to a 0.4 just because I felt like the prints looked better. And I realized that I don't need to print so fast. Like, I don't care how fast it prints. I'm going to start this print. I keep inventory on hand. Right? So this printer doesn't have to be going a thousand miles an hour. I could care less. If it takes these pre three printers in about three hours can produce uh, three of my parts. All right, so every three hours I produce three parts. I don't sell that many that I need to push the speed on this machine and make it any faster. So I'm good with it. You know, they're they're running relatively conservatively as far as speed, but they produce my parts plenty fast enough. If I wanted to crank it up, I could, but I don't see the point. I get good consistent results without having to have them you know, going ape shit. Now, right now, they're doing the first layer, so obviously they're going slower. But, uh, not saying that I've got them turned way down, but I don't, I'm not pushing the limits by any means. Cats are done. I don't know. We'll see if she likes them, but interesting effect for sure. Well, that's it for today's video. I appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, this week coming up, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. We've got a review of the brand new Infinity Flow S1 Plus. As you guys know, I have an Infinity Flow S1. I've been extremely happy with it, and I'm excited to do the review on the S1 Plus. All right, later.